Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Matthew Connerton, Group Marketing Manager here at m and Materials and you're very welcome to this, the second MIDO webcast in our technical series which looks at electrical substation innovation. Our first webcast on Tuesday which was a pre-recorded session uh, covering the differences of transformer insulation materials was very well subscribed and should serve as a great primer for today's session which is about reducing fire risk. Fire risk in transformers and other electrical equipment is a major concern for operators and their impact is potentially devastating. Over time, various approaches have been made to manage this with varying degrees of success. And these typically center around two core themes. The first is accepting a higher level of risk with no further mitigation in place. And the second is acknowledging the higher level of risk, but mitigating that with secondary support systems such as installing firefighting equipment and suitably related walls or barriers. There is, however, a third theme that often gets overlooked, the root of the fire, the fluid. And by looking at the material science of this, this is what we're going to unpick in this session. I will be introducing our speakers in just a minute. I will say that we're really happy so many people have been able to join us on today's session, but some housekeeping points before we begin. Uh, I have muted everybody who's joined by computer audio. However, if you've dialed in by telephone, please could you just mute your microphone now? Um, we will be taking questions during today's session uh, and you can submit your question at any time. To do that, just click the little red button in the top right hand corner of your screen and that will open the chat window and you can put your questions in there. As I say, we'll be taking those questions uh, at the end of the session, that'll be in about 20 minutes. So now I'd like to introduce you to our presenters. Joining us today is Mr. Steve Jones, Sales Director for Mydel in Asia Pacific region. Steve leads the Mydel APAC team from our hubs in Delhi, Shanghai, Brisbane and Singapore, where he is based. Steve has a wealth of experience from his tenure as EMEA Sales Director for Mydel, notably servicing customers in the utilities, and energy sectors, as well as developing key relationships and partnerships with leading transformer OEMs. Also joining us today is our esteemed colleague, Dr. Attila Gyore, a former assistant professor at the University of Technology and Economics in Budapest. Dr. Gyore runs many research and development projects here at m and Materials in his role. Dr. Gyore is one of our senior experts in the field of ester dielectric liquids, supporting many MyDel customers with their application of natural and synthetic fluids. He also contributes regularly to peer-reviewed papers published through international bodies such as the International Conference on Dielectric Liquids, or ICDL, as you may know, CGRE, IEEE, and others. So, without further ado, I'll now hand you over to Steve Jones, who will get us underway. Steve? Thank you, Matthew, and welcome everybody to uh, to this episode of the MyDell webcast series. I'm uh, from a, a gloomy look in Singapore right now. It's great to see um, at the current count of 178 electrical industry professionals from all over the region online. Um, a clear endorsement for the growing role Esters are playing in the transformer market. For those that are familiar with MyDell, welcome back. And for those that aren't, welcome to the club. I hope that you find this extremely useful. So, Mydel. Okay, Mydel is a range of natural and synthetic ester transformer fluids, originally developed over 40 years ago in the 1970s. This is not a new technology. You may be more familiar with them being called vegetable oils, high fire point fluids or K-class liquids. They all sit in this similar category. The word ester comes from its chemistry in the manufacturing process, which is short for esterification. What is important for you to note is that not all esters are the same. They are different and they normally split into two distinct groups like you can see on the screen. Synthetic ester, MyDel7131, made from organic compounds, and natural esters, 
My LEN 1204, derived from rapeseed or canola, and My LEN 1215 from soya bean. So we have soya bean natural esters. Each one differs in its performance and suitability for certain applications. For example, natural esters are not oxygen stable and shouldn't be used in breathing systems. Whereas synthetic ester mide L131 actually have better oxidation properties than mineral oil and hence can be used in all transformer types. There are no restrictions. All three Mydel fluids are fire safe, environmentally friendly, and have a long and well established service history, even up to 400 kilovolt large power transformers. Transformer fires and safety in substations is, is always a taboo or, or controversial subject, and one that should always be handled with care due to the very serious consequences it can have on a business, even in an economy, or worse still, an individual or their family. Although we recognize statistically low as a number, the severity of each one is devastating. And we believe there are still far too many happening around the world. Pictures like the one on your screen don't need to happen anymore. And my colleague, Dr. Attila, will help you to understand why. We will then return to see some real examples of how others, just like you, have already acted and implemented MIDEL as an appropriate and effective fire mitigation strategy. So with that, I'll hand you over to Attila. Thank you, Steve, for that time, everybody. So um, I just like to give you some some brief um, summarizing on the fire safety about this ester liquid. Uh, on this uh, summarizing table, uh, you can see so many parameters about the ester liquids compared to mineral oil. But uh, in this uh, webinar, I just like to highlight the first four rows uh, about the fire safety point of view. Uh, like if we see the fire point on the second row that uh, could show us that uh, my dear ester liquids have a, a fire point greater than 300 degrees C or more than 350 degrees C in case of natural esters, whereas mineral oil uh, has around 170 degrees C. Uh, this is important uh, to get um, to classify these liquids as per O class or K class, and the threshold um, is the the fire point, if the fire point is greater than 300 degrees C, that is what we call K class. If it's below then, that is what we call O class. Um, the other important thing is in the fourth row, which is the net calorific value. And these values you can see here, it's, it's varying between 30 megajoule per kilogram up to 46 megajoule per kilogram. Uh, in a classification, if this value is uh, more than 42 megajoule per kilogram, that is what we call the classification one. If uh, this value is between 32 to 42 megajoule per kilogram, that is uh, class two. And if the, this graphic value is less than 32 megajoule per kilogram, that is what we call the uh, class three. So that is uh, how can we get uh, the first row uh, the fire safety classific, uh, class, it is uh, like in case of mineral oil, is O1 because the fire point is less than 300 degrees C and the net graphic value is more than 42 megajoule per kilogram. Um, whereas if we see like minus 131 or synthetic ester, uh, in this case the classification is, is a K3 because the fire point is more than 300 degrees C and the necrophic value is less than 32 megajoule per kilogram. In this case, it is 30.8 megajoule per kilogram. Um, the meaning of the necrophic value is that if somehow there is a fire, how much heat is releasing during the fire. So in this case, the lower number, the better. So that is why uh, we have a, a better fire property in case of uh, minus one stream. And now, if we move on uh, for the second, the next slide, uh, we see that 
which has collected together a couple of uh, control tests so to show you some fire behavior scenarios. And the first one, what I'd like to show you here, that is what we call, that is the initial resistance test. Uh, during these tests, uh, we used a couple of pans filled with mineral oil or minus one, three, one. And the upper part that is about the mineral oil, the bottom part that is the minus one, three, one. And um, if you see that on the bottom, uh, top part, uh, in mineral oil, we applied an oxystyrene torch, which is a temperature of 3000 uh, degrees C. And we uh, tried to heat up the liquid and see uh, what could happen. Uh, in this case, in case of mineral oil, when the, the torch was applied, um, you can see on the top left side uh, that the liquid was uh, heated up around uh, 95 degrees C. However, the vaporization uh, gas above this liquid is just, just much, much more higher than this uh, 95 degrees C, and that is why that was uh, ignited uh, by the torch after three minutes. If we see on the top uh, right-hand side uh, picture, you can see that after four minutes with mineral oil, uh, that is, you can see that, unfortunately, that the fire started and uh, we need to do some uh, other uh, measure, uh, otherwise that will be a big uh, disaster. If we see the, the bottom side, like the minus one, three, one, after three minutes, we can see that uh, the bath temperature of the liquid is around 100 degrees C. It is a little bit higher than mineral oil. That is due to the better uh, thermal conductivity property of the ester. And after 70 minutes later, which is more than an hour and 10 minutes, uh, the bath temperature is around uh, 230 degrees C, uh, which is uh, below than its flash points or, or fire points. And you can see that the torch is like just blowing the surface uh, of this liquid. And maybe you can realize there are some, some sparks, but, but I just like to highlight here that uh, the time is much, much, much longer than 70 minutes. Um, it's much longer, there's a four minutes. That means um, in a practical life that you've got much longer time, for example, evacuation of a building or a mine. So that this uh, get us, uh, give us some more, more benefits in this case. If we move on to the next uh, scenario, and the next slide, uh, we can see that there is a, a little bit more practical uh, test, I would say, uh, when we check that what could happen if there is a fire from outside uh, and around the transformer. Uh, in this slide, we can see that there is a, a 630 kV transformer filled with uh, 365 kilogram uh, miter laser, and underneath uh, there was a, a a pre dried grips, or almost uh, 200 kilograms, and these grips were ignited, and the temperature sensors uh, were uh, placed in a, around the transformer, inside or outside, and um, the measurement, uh, the test, uh, sorry, uh, the temperature uh, were measured, and after 70 minutes uh, test, um, the temperature was uh, inside was around 180 degrees C on the bottom part or around 200 degrees C on the top part, uh, which these values are uh, well below than the flash point uh, of the liquid, which is in this case, the, the closed cut flash point is around 260 degrees C, and well below than in uh, alternation point, which is around 400 degrees C. Uh, the good point, uh, the thing, the good point was here that um, after the test, the transformer was uh, in an electrical working order. There was no any cracks, no leaks, um, but what I like to highlight here that during this more than an hour uh, test, um, the fluid or the liquid inside didn't ignite uh, by itself because the flash point and the fire point is much higher than the, the temperature was uh, achieved. Um, if we if we move on uh, to the next one, where um, I like to show you in the next slide another uh, kind of uh, scenario. What could happen if there is a, a small leakage uh, in a transformer and maybe a spray out the liquid from the transformer and around the transformer from outside, uh, maybe there is some, some issue happen, like there is an electrical arc or something like that, which, which can uh, ignite uh, any vapor. So in this case, in this scenario, uh, we mimicate a transformer 
uh, like this this uh, tank uh, in the center uh, with a pressurized tank, the two bar tanks, and uh, the liquid was heated up uh, to the operating temperature of the transformer, and after that, the noxious torch was applied like an electrical arc from outside. So on the next slide, you can see that uh, on the le left hand side there is a mineral oil case, on the right hand side is Midas on three one case. So in case of uh, mineral oil on the left hand side, you can see that the torch was applied only once, like one arc, and uh, the, uh, the flame started and and the, the, the fire started and just just it, it, it started the fire and then we need to do something. Uh, in case of the right hand side of my Sons ribbon, you can see now the fireman just, just apply this flame, the oxygen flame, and you can see that the spray is like blow away this this flame, and uh, it, there is not another uh, issue with with the fire because um, the vaporized uh, gassing uh, things it is starting to ignite. That's right. However, due to the the low uh, net graphic value it is not possible to sustain the burning so that is why it just blow away the flame so based on these um, uh, scenarios i like to just just summarize on the slide um, uh, of the fire safety benefits of, of ester liquids uh, as i told you that the the fire point is much higher than the the mineral oil fire point which is uh, greater than 300 degrees C, and that is why it's classified as a K-class uh, fluid or liquid, K2, K3, depends on the, the net graphic value. Uh, I showed you a couple of uh, video about um, the, the self-extinguishing properties. It is very uh, hard to ignite, and if it's sometimes ignite, uh, after that it can, can kill the fire by itself, and that is why we can say that uh, in this case, um, with a 0% risk of the poor fires, if somebody uses this kind of asters. And now I'd like to just uh, hand over to, to Steve to, to show you some, some case studies and other benefits. Thank you, Matilda. Um, that's, that's excellent. And we, we've just all seen some fantastic examples of how Mydel behaves under extreme conditions. And just how much better than mineral oil it is in every possible fire scenario. It's clearly a very safe technology. When you specify MIDEL, the previous screen showed you exactly what you get in terms of confidence and huge improvement on your current situation. In over 40 years of service, there have been no known reported cases of a MIDEL fire. That 100% fire safety record speaks for itself. And it's something that, of course, we are extremely proud of. So just take a moment to consider all of that alongside that track record in application. It's really no surprise to learn that MyDel has emerged as the preferred fire safe technology for transformers. Whilst we're focused a lot on comparison to mineral oil, Mydel is growing in popularity as a replacement for dry type transformers also. A common and well established application is to replace dry type for Mydel filled transformers, particularly for indoor installations. OK, so I promised some real examples of where we, we take all these fantastic benefits and, and people can enjoy the benefits and increase safety. So we, we've now seen the technical specifications and MyDel's proven credentials. We've demonstrated the third party testing that validates all of these great fire safe properties. Now I'll share a few select references where transformer owners like you have already acted and have implemented MyDel as a safe and effective mitigation against transformer fires. So our first case study, which now is, is all 10 years old, this is where independent safety experts, Swissy, were contracted to conduct an equivalent study to risk assess the effectiveness of different fire mitigation methods. 
The in-depth study evaluated four safety measures. Mineral oil transformer with a nitrogen-based system, a mineral oil transformer with a water deluge system, a mineral oil transformer with a sprinkler system, and a MIDAL 7131 transformer with no further safety measures. So the independent safety experts worked diligently through a risk assessment process, and it was concluded that MIDAL 7131, with no further safety measure, was in fact the safest option of all four examined. Taking advantage of this, the, uh, the end user, KWO, in Switzerland, embraced these findings and implemented them on their hydroelectric power plants, as shown in the image on screen. Here, you can see four 50 MVA transformers are installed only one meter apart, underground, without any other safety measure needed. This, for the customer, achieved improved fire safety, used less space, and saved a lot of money in not needing other safety measures, such as firefighting equipment. Next, we'll travel to the UK, at a landmark heritage site in central London. This is a really nice example of where MIDEL can improve the fire safety of older transformers that had originally been filled with mineral oil. You can learn more about retrofilling on next week's webcast episode scheduled for Tuesday. Please make sure you don't miss that. Coming back to this example, we have five distribution transformers over 20 years old. A routine safety inspection or audit took place and found that the transformer no longer complied with fire and building regulations. <laughs> to complicate this, they had a problem, which is now very common to most of us, and that is the lack of available space. Retrofilling with MIDEL, however, offered a very appropriate engineering solution as a way of achieving compliance. MIDEL's high fire point and K-class performance satisfied the standard and avoided extra civil building works. The customer was delighted and now had upgraded the fire safety performance of his old transformers, this was done on site, without the need to spend £100,000 on other safety measures. That is a very big cost saving. But really, you should think about this one and consider some of your own installations. What once may not have been a problem could now represent significant risk and non-compliance. Our next case study brings us to a location that most of us is, would say is closer to home. So here we move to the Philippines, where we supply many thousands of litres of MIDAL EN1204, our rapeseed-based natural ester, every single month in bulk quantity. In the densely populated area of Manila, recognizing fire is a key concern to the general public, the risk of proximity of nearby combustible materials. MIDEL EN is used in pad mount distribution transformers as manufactured by OEMs in South Asia. Manila shares similar urban challenges to all of our mega cities in Asia Pacific. Should this example not be recognized as the standard, or at least certainly best practice? We'll now move into North Asia, to the busy pedestrian shopping districts of Changsha, China. These transformers are bigger than some of the other examples, but the solution to eliminating fire risk was the same. The wharf developer at this state-of-the-art shopping mall wanted to totally de-risk the project in their underground substation. Here, you can see three 110 kilovolt power transformers being carefully positioned to be lowered to two levels below the basement. 
They are then pushed under the mall and left to operate with very little opportunity for access, meaning that the transformer dielectric technology used had to be the safest and most reliable available. In order to achieve this, they selected MIDAL 7131. Since 2016, when installed, these transformers have not had the need to be accessed or maintained, and instead have safely allowed the public to enjoy their shopping trips to the mall and kept the lights on. In this example, we can see that fire safety and business continuity are, of course, very closely linked. So we would all recognise that transformer fires are something that we don't want to happen. However, we would sometimes overlook the knock-on or consequential effects of a transformer fire. And here we'll explore some of the challenges and disruptions you may encounter. Of course, the first and most serious would be in the extreme death. People in or around the substation or building um, that were unable to evacuate safely. We then have a knock-on effect that could impact an industrial estate or a factory in that loss of power through transformer fires affects downtime and production losses. Business continuity is affected. To a neighbourhood or community, we would have a blackout. We'd have to then deploy a crew and we'd have very upset customers on our network. After a fire, it's quite likely that the risk of a site or network would be rated much higher. Therefore, insurance premiums could possibly also be higher to accommodate for extra risk. When a transformer fire occurs, it creates damage. We then go and have to clean that up. That may be in the substation itself, or to adjacent buildings that the transformer fire has taken out in its wake. There will be repair necessary. It could have taken out other electrical equipment that will also need to be accommodated through repair and service, a further disruption and cost. Consider yourself a data center, for example, where you're trusted with handling people's data safely and securely. A transformer fire at that center would have significant reputational damage to that data center provider and can be avoided. And of course, the transformer was there because it provided critical power to people or industry. If it's been burnt out through transformer fire, it would need to be replaced. For large power transformers, that is in the millions of dollars. So we've covered a lot in a short space of time today. But I would like to leave you with three notes to take down if you have a pen available. The first one would be don't wait. If you get caught off guard, the cost, disruption and damage on all aspects of your business due to transformer fires will be significant. Two. Adopt a preventative mindset. This is always far better than a cure. Think about the most at-risk applications and act now. And thirdly, consider the future. Just because we have always done things one way doesn't mean it's the best way forward. Challenge your current methods and make better material decisions in your transformer specs that are not only fit for today's network challenges, but also prepare you for what is ahead as our energy mix becomes more diverse and our future network ideas start to take shape. Thank you very much, Steve um, and Dr. Giore. I'm just conscious of time now, so we, we said we'd field a few questions and I think this first one here might be yourself Dr Tiller. Um, it says you talk of fire safety and building standards in your case study and this refers to the London one 
Uh, what fire standards are you working to and are there international standards on fire safety we should be adhering to? <clears throat> Thanks, Matthew. Uh, yes, there are so many, uh, fortunately. So the, the first one, which is oh, in the, the screen now, uh, that is um, the FN Global uh, Regulation that is um, what they, they call uh, proper, uh, Property Loss Preventation 5-4, uh, that is where you can find so many nice numbers on the, on the spacing of the transformer. Or in the IEC world, uh, you can see so many uh, fire safety measures in the IEC 61936, uh, which is about the um, uh, um, installation of, uh, of a substation. Or in the US, uh, NFPA 70. Um, in Australia, that is the Australian standard, uh, the national standard, which is uh, AS 2067. Um, and unfortunately, for the future, there are so many other working groups like in Seagray. I remember with the Seagray D168, uh, uh, which is about the fire safety of A-style liquids. So, so, yes, there are so many, so many things where you can find uh, these kind of guidelines. Thank you. Um, this one, perhaps for yourself, Steve, um, are these typical MyDell applications? I suppose it does beg the question, is there a typical MyDell? application, Steve. Okay, thanks Matthew. It, it's, it's, it would perhaps be unfair to say a typical um, application because we, we know so many different ways that people are taking on the benefits of, of MyDell that doesn't just uh, you know, circle around risk. However, in terms of fire safety, certainly underground substations is a, um, a big trend that we see developing and it matches the the need for operators to go underground, um, where they need very safe fire safe technologies. Um, above ground urban substations, um, you know, densely packed uh, substation areas in a short compact space with fire safe technologies is, um, is something we, we help people out with a lot. Um, likewise, indoors for the same fire safety areas. And it's not just about utility and network matters. Of course, critical industries such as mines and petrochem, data centers, um, for them it is all about securing their electrical infrastructure. And for them, better material science offers big benefits to allow them to continue to produce as a business. Thank you, Steve. Um, just time for, for one more, perhaps, um, and perhaps this is your for yourself, Dr. Attila. Um, how does MyDell compare to other fire safe materials like SF6, silicone, cast resin and dry type. And I think that the, for the purposes of this question, we're not talking about mineral oil. As we've done those. Oh, yo, thank you, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, it's, a, it's a good one. Um, yes, so there are, there are many, many other kind of uh, fluids and, and uh, solid materials. Um, as you said, yes, SF6 is a, is a gas. Um, it has a good uh, fire properties, however, unfortunately, it's a, it's a very powerful uh, greenhouse uh, gas, so if it's possible, we don't want to use that. Um, silicon, you said silicon. Silicon um, has a good uh, fire properties as well, like the liquids, however, it, if somehow it starts to ignite, it, it can produce some, some toxic gases. So again, if it's possible to avoid. Um, uh, castrazine and dry type. Um, unfortunately, if, if somehow starts the burning of, of any, any castrazine uh, transformer, which is sometimes very hard, but it maybe sometimes happen, uh, unfortunately, it cannot uh, kill the fire, so it will be continue the burning uh, after the exter any, any, any external things or heat just, just removed. So I would say that if we just see that from Five points of view, these could be the measures, but I always like to see a bigger picture and a whole picture. And in this case, it is much easier to compare all these, these uh, techniques, I would say. Okay, thank you very much. Um, sadly, that's, that's all we have time for in today's session. We have captured everybody's questions. So if you have, a, if, if you have asked a question, which we haven't got to, we will get back to you directly. Um, Alternatively, if you don't, did want to contact today's presenters, I've left the details uh, on the screen. Feel free to, to get in touch with your questions. Um, both would be happy to, to, uh, to get back to you directly. 
Um, just like to say thank you to Steve and Dr. Gure for their contributions in today's session. We hope you found it useful and informative. Um, just to give you a heads up, this is part of a wider webcast series. This session that we've just had today will run again in another nine something hours um, at uh, the end of our day here in the UK. Um, so if you've got colleagues on another time zone, please feel free to send them the MyDell link um, or they can register via the MyDell website uh, for that one. Um, concluding the series next week, we do have a retrofilling session, which Steve alluded to earlier today. Um, that's on Tuesday. Again, it will run twice, same time as we've done today and again uh, later on. Similarly, with our final session, which is on designing out substation costs with my Elaster fluids. Uh, so I'd like to thank everybody for their uh, company today and we hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe. Thank you.